Good morning and welcome to the chat on Newsday Amarillo and News Channel 10 2. I'm David Lovejoy. Good morning, everybody. I'm Rhonda Lonert. And I'm the inconspicuous, chuckalicious Chuck Williams. Coming in off a uh, commissioner's meeting on Monday, Judge Nancy Tanner joins us. A lot of things going on, actually, mm -hmm. in the county. We were still dealing with the effects of the fire. Uh, we were looking at some uh, the medical, uh, the mental health hospital. It's just really, it, it's, it's there, but it's, it's coming. Really good momentum. <laughs> yeah, it's really it's good. on the way. It's on the way. <laughs> I think we've seen some events, uh, not just in our area, but across the nation, really shows why this is such a need in our That's community. But, Absolutely. Uh, every, day, every day, yeah. every day, every yeah. 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 well, day. And, and that's the key, Judge Tanner. You see this every day in your court. Every day. You have to deal with this seven days a week, really, to be honest, because I know you get calls and texts on the weekends about some of these issues. Uh, yes, sir. It, it, it's a it's a large amount of, if, if you don't want to look at the human side of it about the emotional toll of it it's a financial burden isn't it oh my goodness family? absolutely it is yeah we got you know it's every every day we get new cases every day mm -hmm. and yesterday we got 11 brand new cases wow. uh just in one day just over the weekend we got 11 new cases and so we'll have to deal with those this week and then through the week we get some every day Wow. And uh, it never, it never slows down. It never stops. And that's why we do need the mental health hospital. We need that hospital right here in Amarillo. To, and it's a state hospital. I've mm -hmm. been told several times to quit saying it's your hospital, Nancy. It's not yours. It's the state. And uh, so, but I'm happy that we're going to get it. And uh, it's, it's going to happen. So we finally got the land. Yay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's going to work. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it's good that you're finally able to talk about it just a little bit more with this land and everything. But, but you know, David's right. We This election season, almost every candidate, you know, had felt the need to address the need for this. Mm -hmm. So um, I just want to say it's not really a question, but I just want to say I really appreciate all your hard work on it because it oh. is obvious it is like hits you upside the head with a frying pan obvious exactly thank you for that yeah. but it's not all me we, it took a group of people to get this done and it's still we're still working on it we're working with uh, WTAMU and uh, with uh, the Chancellor John Sharp with for price Walter Windler you name it everyone's got their name in it which is okay it's gonna it's gonna work out it's just got some intricate little details we have to iron out and I'm not a business person so i don't know how that works but but they do and so they're telling me how it works and so my county attorney is going okay we can figure this out so so we're still working on it and but it's going to work and it's going to be here uh, so i'm excited i'm so excited i can't even tell you and that brings us to what one of the things that was a, a topic of discussion at yesterday's commissioner's meeting uh, tell us a little bit about this this swap uh, trading horses a little bit some land that is yeah. downtown. You're, you're kind of working with WT, and you mentioned uh, uh, Chancellor Sharp, and that. Tell us about that. What's going okay. on? Okay. So yeah. here's the thing. Here's how it happened. Uh, we're looking. We had some land donated by uh, Emerald Area Foundation. It wasn't big enough. I mean, seven acres seems plenty big to me, but I'm. I don't know how big an acre is. Just to look out on a field, I don't know how many acres I'm looking at. So that wasn't big enough. The state says we need at least 10 to 15. So we started looking. Um, uh, for price, bless his heart, he just jumped in the middle of it and said, let me help you. He went down and talked to Chancellor Sharp. Chancellor Sharp said, well, I have some property right across from the old extension agent out there on the boulevard. It's right across between Kilgore, separates at Kilgore Street. And he said, it's really, it's a dilapidated old um, uh, veterinary clinic. He said, you can have it. And you can have it so but in order to do that and this is what i don't know i'm not like i'm not a business person this is what we give you this what are you going to give us right you have to give us a gift too so we're racking our brains trying to figure it out well at some point and along the way somebody came in and said well the the old uh the old greyhound bus station we need mm -hmm. that uh, not me but but Wendler needs that he's gonna build a psychiatric nursing school so that people can get out of that school and go straight to work at that hospital which is a great idea i mean that you couldn't ask for a better scenario and so so it works out that that 
they wanted us to buy it. I don't have any money to buy that. So someone else is going to do that. Area Foundation and other foundations are going to purchase that building and gift that to Mr. Wendler. So Mr. Wendler needs a gift from me. So the only thing that I have to give, I'm just like the poor little boy, you know, all I have is gruel. That's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> so... All I can give them is a parking lot that we no longer use across the street mm -hmm. from the uh, AT&T building, Caddy Corner to the Santa Fe building, and right next door to the Petroleum building. And Walter says, yeah, I, I'll take it. Well, we can't, the county cannot gift a university a gift without calling it something else. So we're working on what we're gonna call it and uh, so that's where we are right now, but it's gonna work. I know it's gonna work. It's just got some little intricate details we have to work out and, and it's gonna be great. I, I, that Greyhound bus station is an eyesore for now. If you just look, draw by and look at it. So by making that into a, a nursing school, it's just gonna be wonderful for downtown, wonderful. And so they just need a place to park. So they're gonna have to walk a block <laughs> to get to school, but they can do it. They're nurses. They can do this. You know, and it, it seems to me right now it's a matter of polemics and what you're going to call it. And that's just what I was going to ask. Is there going to be enough room for that for student parking? Because I can imagine it's going to be a heck of a lot of students going up, going there. Yeah, that's that's sufficient, the, the parking lot. Then I found out in court yesterday that some of our employees still use that parking lot because the AT&T employees are parking in it. So we have to get them out of it again and put our employees back in the Santa Fe building uh, area and, and then we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out if we have to put signs up and threaten them. <laughs> and it, and it, it really follows what, uh, what Beth Duke talks about at Center City. Uh, I guess we could call it recycling or refurbishing. Mm -hmm. you, you get rid of an eyesore in the bus station. Uh, mm -hmm. We had the press conference last week about the expansion of the medical Are side of WT in downtown Amarillo. Yes. Uh, so the parking lot becomes very vital and useful there. So it, it's not a sense of well, we're just wasting something or we're giving it away. This is going to go to work and be used right away. I mean, Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. I mean, the parking lot's in perfect shape. The parking lot is in perfect shape. All we have to do is strop it, and so we'll. It's going to be. It's going to be really great once it, everything gets ironed out, and all the papers are signed, and all the hands are shaken, and all the good old boy packs on packs on the back. So it'll get it'll get done. It'll, it'll get done. It just takes time. I just want them to get started on the hospital so I can see it before I retire. <laughs> that number just really kind of floored me. Eleven over a weekend, and and, and yeah. you know we yeah. some of us, you know once you, you go in my front door, I I don't see the rest of the world until four thirty in the morning, and so yeah. you don't really see the 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 the, the sometimes the the size and the scope yeah. of some of the issues but think about that 11 cases landing on your desk first thing monday morning and that's just the start of the week we that's had just to start the start of the week we'll have and more was, we have more every day every I day i wanted to ask if that was that, does that occur often that oh yeah oh yeah that's kind of a low number sometimes yeah. we have oh my 10 and 20. Yeah.